I'm here in the gardens of the world famous restaurant, The French Laundry. And if you listen, you can hear birds and bees and chickens. You can see trees and flowers, and you can touch and smell the aromatic rosemary and fennel. Oh, using all my senses, I'm gonna take you on a culinary adventure. 100 Days Drinks, Dishes, and Destinations is brought to you by... With AMA Waterways, guests can climb, pedal, and journey beyond the beaten path while cruising on storied rivers across Europe. You can find out more at amawaterways.com. When I picture my dad, Josh, I remember his hands, strong, they were worn, stained. That was years of hard work as a lumberjack. His commitment, work ethic, values, that's what really inspired me to create Josh Sellers. Otherworldly and down to earth, visit Napa Valley. Come with me to stamp your passport to delicious. I'm drinks and culinary expert, Leslie Sabraco, and I'm traveling, tasting, sipping, and savoring the world to share my bucket list of palate-pleasing experiences. I guess I guess right. On 100 Days, drinks, dishes, and destinations. Hear, see, touch, smell, and taste. The five senses. For me, taking the time to engage them all is an important step to happiness. Oh, here's the tingle. Oh, it is, right? <laughs> I've been teaching people how to enjoy wine and beverages for decades by incorporating just those sensations. I call it the four S's. See, swirl, smell, and sip. The same thing is true in life. No matter where in the world you are, it's all about being present. What a way to awaken all of your senses. We're high above the valley in a balloon on a pristine day, and you can hear the sound of the balloon, the quiet of the air. You can see the glorious countryside dotted with vineyards. You can smell the fresh air, touch the leather on the balloon. I'll tell you, there's no better way to capture all of your senses than high above the world. Down there, that's the town of Yountville in wine country, not far from my home. I have to admit that eating and drinking for a living, taste is what I generally talk about, but smell is the key to any sensory experience. To test my olfactory abilities, a visit to vintner Jean-Charles Boisset is in order, since he's added perfume to his wine empire. Well, we start with wine, because this is what I've been doing all my life. So wine from Burgundy, Pinot Noir. Then very inspired by this amazing flavor profile. Walking nature, going in the gardens, going in the sous-bois, going in the forest. I said to myself, we have to get into the world of fragrance. The first two fragrances we wanted to make were really related to wine and the vineyard. One with white oak, rosewood, and a- That was inspired by JCB. Number, number 13, 13. Absolutely. And with a very delicate vanilla, the most high-end, the most sought after, Madagascar vanilla. This is so exciting because this is virtually the same thing as making wine. All my life, I've been smelling everything I touch and see and feel. Oh, <laughs> I could feel number 13. <laughs> Leslie. Right here. Oh, right here. Look at oh. that. Not only she's gorgeous, <laughs> she's irresistible, but now with this fragrance, now I smell I'm going good. in. I smell good as well. Oh. I look good. And then if you want to go more to the United States mm -hmm. and maybe more into the evening, into the right. power of the night, to the fabulous discovery of darkness. Now I'm getting afraid. Now you go. Fear is trickling in. You go into bourbon vanilla. Oh, a no, now of, you're talking my language. A little bit of oud, and certainly a flavor I adore is sandalwood. You know, this is so much 
different. I mean, the, the, the difference between the two is, is remarkable. This one has an earthy woodiness, as you yes. said too. It's like you're walking through a, this one you're walking through a forest. That's it. This one you can smell the wood as your freshly cut wood as you're sort of walking through a forest. You have some underbrush, you know, mm -hmm. under your feet, right? Yes. And you have that spice from sandalwood. Whereas this one is, does have the number 13 has more finesse, has more aromatic in the sense of delicate flowers and things like what that. A right? <laughs> it takes Leslie's Bracco, one of the most amazing wine women on the planet, to describe a fragrance without tasting it. Then I got to make my own perfume. To my chosen base, I added the aromas that appealed to me. I chose citrus and rose to make my perfume, alcohol, and then water. A magnet is dropped in to assist in mixing. And is this how all perfume is made? Yes, well, on a small scale. The bottle is filled, the spray top added, and voila, here it is. Now, Leslie, you have your own personalized <gasps> blend. Look at this, my Fantastic. own perfume. Now I have to come up with a name. I would call it the Leslie blend. The Leslie blend, Sante. Sante. Merci. Of course, wine is the usual medium for honing my tasting skills. And now I'm gonna be working blind. So, you have four glasses in front of you. Your job will be to determine what is in each glass? We should have a lot of fun today. And we should say this is not because it's Halloween time. It's not. Right. Yes. I mean, you exactly. can't see the color of the wine, nothing about it. That's why, you know, it really puts you to the test. We're going to focus on two areas, the nose and the palate. So what do you smell and what do you taste? And I would even recommend work your way through all of the wines, really learn the nose um, before we start to taste. So okay. what's your nose telling you? This one, I'm, I'm a little... A little torn. It's very grassy. Mm -hmm. It's got some green character. Mm -hmm. Two and four are red. Okay. Two has sort of bright cherry fruit. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a little cherry nose on that. It's lighter on the palate. Yeah, what do you think of the finish? Do you detect tannin structure? It's tannic. Mm -hmm. It's tannic, it's got high acid, and it's got tannin. So mm -hmm. I'm just gonna go on a limb. Pinot Noir, um, some oak, mm -hmm. uh, four to six years. Okay. Do you want to guess uh, Appalachian? Appalachian would be, well, we got Carneros. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Making Pinot Noir in California, in Napa Valley, would be primarily Carneros. So I'm going to go mm -hmm. Carneros. Lock in your answer? Lock it in. That is exactly correct. <laughs> so it's our 2016 Stewart Ranch Vineyard Pinot Noir, which is in Carneros. It is at sea level. It's four feet above sea level. So I'm back to four. Okay. To me, I'm going young, red. Okay. Could potentially be mountain fruit on mm -hmm. this one. Lots of oak. I'm gonna say it's a Bordeaux style blend based on Cabernet Sauvignon with Malbec, maybe Merlot. Certainly not older than 20. I'm gonna, still gonna go four to six years. Okay. But yeah. I'm not gonna go seven plus. Seven plus. Right, yeah. Um, Appalachian, Valley Floor Mountain, you said you think there's some presence of mountain. Just yeah. What the hell? Yeah. yeah. Locked in. So, this is our 2016 Malbec. Ah, okay. But there is Cabernet blended into there here as well. It is, we it is technically truly a Malbec, but with a good presence of Cabernet. Okay. And the majority of it is mountain fruit. See, this is the way I taste. You, you do deduction, right? Yeah. So you say, mm -hmm. okay, what, what, what is it not? Yep. This one is a white wine. Okay. Uh, it is not herbal or grassy, which leads me to believe that it's not Sauvignon Blanc. Okay. Although it could be a fruity version of California Sauvignon Blanc. I haven't tasted your Albarino, not too many people in California make it, but I'm going with white Albarino, young, stainless steel, and uh, yeah, one to three years. So this is our 2019 Napa Valley Sauvignon Blanc. Oh, it's Sauvignon, <laughs> okay. Um, but it does have beautiful, bright, refreshing notes. It's citric, it's kind of tropical, and very reminiscent of Albarino. It is tricky. Well, that, that was really fun and it's Wonderful. delicious. And it just shows you that First of all, people who taste wine for a living like myself can get wrong answers. Sight is such an important piece of it. And when you remove that, you it really becomes have to so pay much attention. harder. Well, and I think if you had a white wine in front of you, you're gonna immediately look at the color. And if you see that it's darker yellow, your brain is saying there's oak or it's Chardonnay or something. Mm -hmm. It tells you right away that this wine is different from a wine right. that looks much clearer. Exactly. Well, thank you. Of course, of course. I'm still in the town of Yountville where the world-famous French Laundry has been satisfying diners for decades. 
Just across from the restaurant, I met Chef for a stroll. This is where it all begins, in the garden. Hey, look at that. What do you think? Oh, girls. What's the philosophy behind the French Laundry Gardens? The need to have really great fresh vegetables. Mm -hmm. We have them right here, grown by our team, right. harvested by our team at all the various stages throughout the plant's life. These are little tiny sprouted cloves of garlic. Ah, look at that. So you know right in your here. kitchen, when you get a head of garlic that kind of goes awry, yeah. if you take the individual clove, right. put it in the ground, then you can grow you your can whole, the whole head. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when yeah. will this be ready? Well, at every single stage, there's something to offer. So now we can trim it peel it, confit it, it's very tender and very sweet. Halfway through the life, it's gonna be a little, almost look like a leek, mm -hmm. a baby leek or spring onion. Further in the life, it's gonna be something a little tougher. It starts to form the neck that needs to be braised. And then later in life, it's gonna have a shoot that goes up, that will then turn into a seed pod, and it goes back. And then it goes back and back yeah, and back. Yeah, back. You must go through a lot of garlic. Oh, we do, yeah. <laughs> So really- So there's something growing all the time. Every stage. Every season. But a lot of the things are like this. It's this very simple thing that you may not really recognize is that this plant, we had the beautiful broccoli growing. Mm -hmm. We trimmed the broccoli and now- oh, look at that. They have these beautiful broccoletti that are coming up. So now this broccoletti with the beautiful blossoms becomes a very own special dish when it was never intended. Mother Nature gave it to us. Right. So this one is, is a perfect example of awareness. And we like to call that the sixth sense in cooking. That if you're not aware of what's going on around you and you don't see the potential opportunity in all these things, you'll miss it. So we call it, you know, have to take the blinders off and come through and really just allow the plants and Mother Nature to speak to you. And that's got to give you this incredible feeling of gratification, right? Absolutely. To be able to be out here, pick something like this, take it back to the kitchen, cook it, and see the happiness on people's faces. Yeah. Can I eat this like of this? Mm. That's really good. Very tender. Fresh. I feel healthier already. Yeah, like a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> this is our hoop house, our own special little microclimate where we grow a lot of the little tender It is. It's herbs. warm and humid in here, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So we have the fans to keep everything circulating so it doesn't allow anything, the humidity to build up too much. Mm -hmm. What is this? It's a purple sorrel or oxalis. It's like a little lemony lettuce. Mm -hmm. And, and you like see, look at that fuchsia almost mm -hmm. color. That's so intense on the yeah. back, isn't it? Yeah, it's good, right? It's really good. Yeah. Would this make a good cocktail? Oh, absolutely. Can I steal a couple of those for a cocktail? Absolutely. Little bouquet. There you go. <laughs> Well, David, I have to thank you because not only do I feel very, very healthy right now, <laughs> I've got some lovely herbs to take with me to go make a cocktail. Let me know how that goes. Yeah, well, I'll bring one over to you after work. Sounds good. <laughs> Leaving the garden behind, it's just a short trip to the bar at Bartisano's to make a cocktail. Hello, Yoel. Hello, Miss Leslie. Nice how you doing? to see you. Likewise, how are you doing? I'm good. I am excited to be here and make a cocktail. I just came from uh, the French Laundry Gardens, your Perfect. neighbor up the street. Just a couple of garnishes. Let's yes, isn't that beautiful? With. This is sorrel. Perfect. So we're going to come in with our main base, 209 Gen. Mm-hmm, a San Francisco uh, favorite. So you're going to have your nice, herbiness, lightly spiced citrus notes. And I am a gin lover. Three quarters of an ounce of our elderflower uh, oh. liqueur. So you're gonna have that floralness from the jasmine, the elderflower. Pairing it up with half ounce of lime juice. For our herbs, we're gonna use some fresh, fresh tarragon here from the garden. Oh, can I have of a little bite of that? So mm. you kinda want the tarragon to come in as the main focus of the cocktail. Um, that, that way, just is explosive kind of anise, isn't it? It is, you know? it is indeed. Add some crispiness to this. We're gonna add like a little bit of cucumber. So we're gonna go ahead and muddle this in. Nice, nice, good muddle. What's your favorite spirit? Do you have I'm one? I'm a bourbon fan. You're a Big bourbon guy. Bourbon I fan. love bourbon. So if you catch me any day outside okay. of work, that's what I'll be drinking. That's what you'll be drinking. So you're gonna give it a quick little shake, pop it off, give it a nice strain to kind of get all the little bits and pieces of the tarragon. And that soda just adds a little more refreshing. Exactly. 
Maybe we can use that little sorrow to kind of add some color to it. Yeah. I'm gonna pick a few. And this has a, this has a citrusy zing to it. Here, have a taste. Mm, it does mm -hmm. indeed, it go great with the cocktail. A little flower. <laughs> That's a green <laughs> um, gilman right there. That is so good. That's just, you just need to be poolside mm. when you're having this drink. Exactly. <laughs> One of my most memorable sensory adventures was sailing along the Danube through Hungary, standing aboard the ship and viewing the stunning vistas as we arrived in the city of Budapest. Ah, the spectacular sight of the parliament building is seared in my memory. Once in the city, the fragrances of paprika and goulash in the market, food stands with langosh frying and decadent chocolate cake hmm, still make me drool. I also visited a small restaurant, Shisel, just outside of town for local dishes. Imbibing good wine and strong palenka complemented the amazing ham made from the hairy pig known as mangalitsa. Mangalitsa is what uh, my grandparents used to have and has, has long curly hair and has less fat than the other ones, than the other types. It doesn't look very fatty. And because the family prepares it so uniquely, Mm -hmm. Putting it in spicy brine and smoke it, and then and then they air dry it for yeah. five months. First, you have to try something a liquid, okay. which is called palinko. Palinko. And uh, you know, it's a very transparent thing. It's not sweet. It's a tradition to to start a food with that. So egeshigedre. Egeshigedre. Mm. Oh, and this is. A local spirit. It's made from fruit, so I have the apricot. I have yeah. this distilled from apricot, and it smells of apricots, and it's smooth and strong. <laughs> a strong. You so we just take one. a little drink of that before we start. Just no, to... we usually have at least one or two portions. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So well, it, it's, it's a crime to leave it there. I want to drink like a local, so count me yeah. in. But the slowly, whole thing? No, no, you no, slowly. slowly, you slowly. Sip. slowly. This is a good one. Mm. Mm. All right, well, let's. I want to try this. Mm -hmm. mm. Oops. Mm. There's a sort of power to this ham. Mm -hmm. This is that really savory, but it's got a gorgeous smokiness to it. You know, this is what I uh, grew up on. My granny was, uh, was, uh, was having the, uh, the kitchen built in the Hungarian way, which means pork with lard, lard with pork, mm -hmm. pork with pork, lard with lard. Can we just talk about this bread? Mm -hmm. It's homemade bread here mm -hmm. at Shisel, and this is dense, chewy. I, I could eat 10 pieces of this bread. It's so good. It's, it's crispy, mm -hmm. and inside spongy, and very, very, very soft. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's rather mild tasting, and chewy and dense, to go kind of with the fatty silkiness of this and the salty savoriness. And then you get the kick from the pickle or the pepper to give that acid and spice to it. It was fantastic. Oh, thank you. I thank enjoyed you. that so much and I had the bread. When you have good restaurant, I have good bread, good ham, margarita ham, and good dry white wine. Oh, well I've done the first two, so I'm ready for the third. When and you your family that, has been making wine for 200 years? Uh, one, 120 years. 120 yes. years. Yes. You've I am been fifth generation. And this is, and muskoteller is, t tell me how you say it in Hungarian. Muskotai. 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 This is uh, spicy, fruity, light, dry, mm. white, white. Say, please, say, Egeshegerre. <laughs> Egeshegerre. Good. Egeshegerre. <laughs> Back in Jaunpil, I'm ready for a stroll around town to see some of the art installations. And you never know what or who you're going to bump into. He's plugging his ear. <laughs> right, Judge? So how did the art walk come about? So back in 2009, a group of volunteers created the Art Walk, and it was an idea that one of our citizens had, and together they reached out to Gordon Huther, who's a very famous artist, and he was the first to supply multiple pieces into the Art Walk. And from there, it has blossomed to over 68 sculptures over the past 11 years, and we currently have over 35 sculptures on display in Yachtville today.
So this is one of your more famous sculptures, isn't it? Yeah, so this is The Chef by Lorenzo Mills, who is a local artist, and it was designed specially for Yonville to represent the culinary excellence that we have here and all of the famous chefs. And Yonville is definitely one of the culinary capitals of the world, yes. I'm gonna say. My final visit is a place to experience all the senses. But first, a taste. Hi, Leslie, welcome. How are you? Oh, I'm wonderful. Oh. Really excited to be sharing this lovely champagne with you. This is a fun project uh, that we started, I guess, a few years ago. And it's a partnership with a wonderful grower producer in the Champagne region of France. You Beautiful have made a new wine. friend in me, <laughs> Philip. I've got to be honest. I always do. When I show up with bubbles, everyone wants when to be my friend. When you pour me a glass of champagne and give me potato chips, I'll tell you, you've made a friend for life. life right? <laughs> There is nothing like champagne. Yeah. I am a sparkling wine lover in general, but when you say champagne, it evokes images of, of you know, the world's best. Absolutely. So. It kind of has its own story and, and it tells it in such a, a remarkable way. So, well, uh, cheers. A votre santé. Yeah, a votre. Mm. Glorious. Isn't that beautiful? That and is. it's got this kind of brioche, mm. uh, yeasty, breadiness to it. It's I just like to call it quaffable. Absolutely. <laughs> Most definitely. So we've got quaffable and crunchable. Exactly. The, the and they're best pairing in the world. Meant to be mm. together. So mm. what we have here. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? What is that? This, uh, these are white truffle potato chips. Oh my God! I know, right? All right, hang on. I know, and you cannot now. have only one. You have to ha you know, serious, eat really. the whole bag once you start. <gasps> it's unbelievable. Oh. So, um, we wanted to kind of bring to the these table. These are mine, right? Yeah, I, I got my own bag in the back. Don't worry. <laughs> but we wanted to bring to the table just uh, the simple pleasures of life. Mm -hmm. uh, I love how some of your best bites of food or your favorite food and wine memories can be the most simple. So we kind of started with that potato chips, a little bit of cheese, and wine. The idea behind handwritten is what's more personal than a handwritten note from somebody that you love. I think it connects people in very special ways. And if we aspire to one thing with our wine, is it's that bottle of wine on the dinner table when you're surrounded by the people you love and laughing and making great memories. So, Aww, yeah, that's beautiful. Would you like to try a little red? I would. OK, we have one of my favorites. So I think I was mentioning we make five different Cabernets every year. And the, the only difference, they're all 100% Cabernet Sauvignon coming from uh, two acres of vines or less. They just come from different parts of Napa Valley. And, so and what you we can see, you know, I, I, when I teach wine classes, and I'm sure as you do here, you talk about seeing, swirling, smelling, and sipping. Absolutely. You know, when you look at the, that glass and that intensity of color, mm -hmm. it's such a beautiful color. So this is our 2016 Coombsville Cabernet. Mm -hmm. uh, Coombsville is a, a really wonderful area here in Napa that's uh, little known uh, just because it's the newest uh, appellation that was mm -hmm. officially recognized uh, only in 2011. There's a plushness to this you know, Absolutely, yeah. I actually sort of feel like I'm sinking yes. back in the couch <laughs> when I'm drinking this. I go, ah. Yeah. Oh. Kind of velvety, mm -hmm. soft. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a richness to it. Um, one of the things we wanted to do was pair it with a little goodies. And oh. we got some ham and cheese, but this is not any ordinary ham and cheese. We have uh, this beautiful hand-sliced prosciutto. It's actually coming from Iowa. The texture, so if I closed my eyes and I lifted that prosciutto to my mouth, you know, it just right here, going in, you go, oh, it's it's got this little salty tang. It's got um, some, some earthy aromas, but, Absolutely. you know, but not overwhelming sort of sweet. Yeah. Um, it melts. It does. Just melt texturally. You know, you feel this, this piece of prosciutto. I'm not enjoying this at all. <laughs> this, is, this is the tough part of the day, I'm sure. <laughs> my stomach loves you, my thighs hate you. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I take that as a compliment, though. <laughs> to me, when you taste wine, 
And the reason I taste so much wine and enjoy so much is because it, it is about utilizing all those senses. It's right. about, you know, the sight, the, sm the, the smell, the, the taste. Absolutely. You know, hearing a, a champagne cork open, you know, it's, <laughs> right? It's, it's all of those senses sort of tied together and that, that's the challenge and the fun of it and yeah. the enjoyment. Absolutely. Cheers. 100 Days Drinks Dishes and Destinations is brought to you by... With Ama Waterways, guests can climb, pedal, and journey beyond the beaten path while cruising on storied rivers across Europe. You can find out more at amawaterways.com. When I picture my dad, Josh, I remember his hands. Strong, they were worn, stained. That was years of hard work as a lumberjack. His commitment, work ethic, values, that's what really inspired me to create Josh Sellers. Otherworldly and down to earth, visit Napa Valley. For more information on all episodes, along with our expanded digital series, including behind the scenes footage and stories, and links to follow me on Facebook and Instagram, go to 100 Days Drinks Dishes Destinations.com. Hey, Chef, what do you think about this rosemary? Good? I'm thinking maybe on top, just on top of a steak or something? He's not very talkative. Y'all, I'm looking at you right now, and <laughs> I think Are you I'm, I'm, with, prom? I'm gonna garnish the drink, and I'm gonna <laughs> garnish him. Whoops. Whoops, that's a little evaporation problem here. Mm-hmm. La, 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 la,